Good morning. My name is Christina Rebecca Duakoi. I am 40 years old. I am born and raised in Sydney, Australia with Tongan background. I am married with nine children. I have been a born again Christian since 2016 at the age of 32. I lived my whole life, 32 years, as a false Christian, heavily immersed in false teachings and false doctrine. Late last year, I heard a sermon by Pastor Charlie preaching about not being ashamed of the gospel. I was trembling because I realized that I was ashamed to share the gospel. I was ashamed to share the gospel because of my past of being a false, Christ, a false Christian convert. I want to publicly proclaim my love and adoration to Jesus Christ, my personal saviour. I want to share my testimony this morning as my personal act of worship unto my heavenly Father God. This is also for my precious children. I was born and raised in a religious Tongan Wesleyan church. I went to church Saturday and Sunday for 20 plus years. It was in the Tongan language, traditions and culture. I believed I was a Christian because I went to church. I saw photos of my baptism when I was a baby. They were displayed in my home. I had a strong desire to know God, but fell into the trap of workspace salvation. I heard preaching, sang hymns, read Bible passages, recited apostle creeds, attended Sunday school, youth group, choir practice, took sacrament, church camps, participated in church drama skits. From my earliest memory, around four years old, I only ever knew severe depression, chronic anxiety, extreme guilt, heavy shame and paralyzing fear and a deep spirit of rejection. I always questioned my existence, believing that I was a mistake and had suicidal thoughts. I often wished I was dead. I went up to receive Christ a handful of times over these years. I was petrified of hell, but I never had assurance on my salvation. I had enough of the Tongan Wesleyan church and methods. At 23, I went the opposite direction to a so-called Christian interdenominational inter organization, thinking that this would solve all my problems. I went up again to receive Jesus into my heart. I would be led astray by many false teachings and false doctrines. I was, e I was easily spiritually, emotionally and mentally manipulated. To fill the emptiness in my soul, my identity became in all my good works and deeds. I sat through countless lectures, was trained on how to be a missionary, went on outreaches around Australia, South Pacific, Asia and East Africa. My sin was watered down. Satan was attacking my mind. I had to break the family generational curses, break the chains of strongholds, receive from the grace bucket. God was like a Santa Claus and my prayers were like a wish list. Anytime there was a call to the front, to receive an anointing from some speaker, I would be there with my hands, with my faith. I hope to receive this special impartation of blessing. If I didn't change, I didn't have enough faith. I had to muster up more faith. I needed to speak in tongues. I needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was deceived to then also go out and deceive others. I did door-to-door -door evangelism and shared my testimony at churches in Tonga. I, I studied the Bible in New Zealand. I visited nursing homes and served in local churches in Fiji. I visited prisons and orphanages in Uganda. 
I led child youth conferences in Rwanda and Tanzania. I served at the soup kitchen in Perth for the homeless. I facilitated activities for refugees at Christmas Island Detention Centre. All this while proclaiming the name of Christ. But it was my good works for my own glory and on my own strength. I was here for about four years. After my season here, I was at a new all-time low. I had a lot of nervous breakdowns. My mental anguish was so great. It would be the one and only time I tried to end my life. By God's grace, it did not come to pass. I was angry and bitter with God. Didn't he see all I did for him? Why am I worse than ever? Why didn't he save me? Why aren't my plans working? The last chapter of this false Christian life would take me to my early 30s. I was attending a Baptist church where the pastor at that time was a Calvinist. This is where I would hear the deadly Calvinist flower Tulip preached, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. I was very surprised to hear this for the first time. I felt intelligent because it sounded so solid and convincing. I remember feeling glad that I had this preaching and I wanted to learn more. Is this what I was missing all these 30 years? I learned that I had to be elected because I did not have the ability to choose God at all because I was so depraved. I was so angry. What? How come no one told me this after all these years of my good works for nothing? Am I even elected? I felt exasperated and thoroughly exhausted. Christianity was complicated and difficult to understand. Every country I went to, the Christian faith looked different as well. Thankfully, there was an older woman, my friend, who shared with me the true gospel. It was very simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16. She emphasized whosoever believeth, often in our chats. I was used to, what are you doing or what ministry can you take part of? How can you serve? It was like the more ministry you did, the more Christian you are. She sounded very different, very different indeed. She started teaching me the biblical role of a woman. It was all news to me. I was stunned, but wanted to know more. I became a born again Christian late 2016. One morning I read James 1.8. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. I realized that was me. I wept. I realized it's faith in what Jesus Christ had done on the cross that saves and gives eternal life. When I read the Bible, something was different. It was like the words were alive and I can feel my soul quicken. From 2016 till now, it has been a process of God's discipline and chastening upon my life. God revealed my roots of pride, hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, wrath, rage and anger. Through the Bible and sound biblical teachings, it has uncovered the lies in my life. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. I have an intimate fellowship with my heavenly Father that soothes my soul. It is endearing to know by faith and experience his unconditional love. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Amen. This promise comforts my soul and I have no more guilt. Romans 8.1 I have no more shame because of the power of the Saviour's atonement. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though 
they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah 1.18 Fear tormented me, but now his perfect love cast out fear. 1 John 4 verse 18 Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. My rejection has been replaced with my identity in Christ. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. The Lord God Almighty is holy. I was a worker of inequity. I deserve to go to hell. His precious blood saved me from eternal torment. Romans 3, verse 25. Whom God hath sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Jesus is my precious wrath bearer, taking my punishment upon himself so I can be reconciled with God. I'm, I'm really thrilled that my name is written in the book of life. I have a desire to do good works for God because I love him and I fear him. I have been, I have been learning how to be a godly wife, mother, sister, friend to the church family. This is the first time I have shared my testimony as a born again Christian. I would like to go out and boldly share the gospel. I am, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I would like to start right now with my children. Samiwela, Dalikavili, Micah, Selai, Moala, Jemima, Keziah, Karen Abuk, Enoch. I love you so much. Mummy can't take you to heaven. But I'll share with you the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Eternal life is by faith on Jesus Christ. It gives me great joy to know my children are in sound doctrine and hear the gospel preached. And I just wanted to, to end my, um, my testimony. I just wanted to say thank you to Arthur Charlie and Brother Damon for preaching the word of God. And just say thank you to the brothers. Thank you for your labor of love. I want to say thank you to my sisters. Thank you for all your prayers, your support and encouragement, long suffering for me and my family. And I, I thank you for being an example in real life for me to witness. May God be glorified. Thank you.